Welcome back. Uh, just wanted to um, tell you I got my microphone for the phone and it seems to be working pretty good. Uh, some of the stuff at the beginning of the uh, report I gave you on the 29th of November was really low. Uh, in the beginning what I tried to tell you was the fact that I had removed all my rolling stock and engines which you see over there that uh, were underneath on the uh, the staging level and I pulled them out of there because I have a tendency to drop heavy things but additionally the uh, the main level and the third level which you can see underneath that printout back in there uh, all the way to the corner is all done uh, from the standpoint of being roughed in it's got all the risers up to the proper level and uh, so what I've been working on right now has been uh, the electrical, which is very important because if you don't have a good electrical plan, as I get up here, I'll try to show it to you. I did a, um, a printout. Normally the printouts I have are, you know, 8 by 10s This is a 400% one that I used, and I'm going to show you one of the stations. You can see where I've annotated different feeds where the power brakes will be in the track I'm trying to make sure this doesn't get blurry on there and that's for uh, the town of uh, San Angela and these marks here that you can see those are tracks where just in case an engine might sit there for a long period of time for example this is going to be a commuter yard so I got some Kato RDCs I'm going to be running back and forth so there's one or two of them might sit there and so I want to have the ability to uh, cut the power so anyway so I did that on that entire printout which you can see is kind of a, a miniature of the entire layout and I came up with the power districts I want to have how many power breaks and I use a numbering convention the for example, San Angela uh, is, I don't know if you can see this one, it's SA for San Angela, and that's power feed number seven. If the siding or on the main line in there is longer than about three feet, then I'll put two feeds in them like I did underneath. So the first one might be uh, SA061, uh, and then another one over in here would be 062. And that way I'd be able to trace all the wiring, which I found, sorry the finger, is very important. Now I'm going to show you what I've been doing once I get it on there, and I come back and then I annotate the, uh, the actual design layout that I've glued down. Uh, and you can see here where I'm going to do some LED feeds, because these... These are some of the tracks. Any of the tracks that have a power cut off requires a switch uh, and then an LED so I know whether it's on or off. Uh, but anyway, that's kind of what I've been doing. And the other thing is, once I, I look at the layout and how the, the various uh, parts are going to be powered, it also lets me plan on other things, such as I'm considering the use of using frog juicers, uh, since I'm going to be using electro frogs on, on these levels. Uh, and so I need to plan for the installation of the frog juicer circuit boards if, if I decide to go that way. Uh, I will be using some more tortoises on this level, but those are only for the turnouts that I cannot reach uh, and, and flip manually. Well, but anyway, thank you. That's all for now.